If you're PC gaming on Windows 10 and you're either on an old potato computer that's very slow or you're even on the latest and greatest high-end gear, then today's video is going to be the tutorial and guide that helps you make Windows 10 as fast and snappy as possible without doing any irreversible damage to the OS itself. Though first thing is first, we're gonna be starting off here with a fresh install of Windows. So in order to make your fresh install of Windows a bootable USB drive that you can then install Windows off of, you just go to microsoft.com and download their media creation tool, which I'll put the link in the description below. As of today, they still don't have a 2004 creation bootable. So you will have to install Windows. And then after you do this, you will have to go to the update in Windows itself to update to version 2004. And if you can't currently see the update option for version 2004, then either one of two things has happened. And that is you don't have version 1903 or 1909 installed yet, or your computer isn't ready for the update. Though if you've made it through the update process and you are now on version 2004, then there are a few things you can do. And that is you can just check if you are on this version by just typing in system info, and then you can bring this up here. And it should actually say to you, uh, build 19041 and this is actually uh, version 2004 so if you've got that version right there that means you are on Windows 2004. Another thing is too about this current version is that there are quite a few changes compared to 1909 and 1903. If you wish to know what changes they are I'll put the link to the video up here that I recently did stating all those changes and the last thing before we get into this tutorial as well is there's currently a lot of known bugs with version 2004. So if you're currently on a work PC and you cannot afford any instabilities at all, then I do not recommend upgrading at this point in time to version 2004. Though with that aside, it's now time to start optimizing Windows for all you gamers and power users out there. So today we're working off a fresh install of Windows and what we're doing here is when I first install Windows on pretty much any device, I always disconnect the internet. This allows me to install Windows without having to sign into a Microsoft account. And I feel like this for me is a good thing. It just allows me to not only when I sell a PC, the person can then put all their own info in, but when I personally use the PC, I find that I don't have any uh, cloud-based apps that I feel put my PC in a laggy state. So this is the reason why I do this. I want it basically all my stuff to be installed on my hardware so it's super snappy and super fast. Another thing when you're first installing Windows is you wanna uncheck all these boxes. There's seven boxes in total that it presents you with. And then on the next tab after you've restarted your computer, you can then decline Microsoft's uh, device history as well. This will then take you into Windows but you will have to then update to version 2004. Though, once we're moving on to this desktop right here, you'll notice that we can now start applying all the tweaks and tricks that we're used to doing. So what we're gonna do here is just go to settings tab and we're gonna start from the system itself. And going through, I'm just gonna quickly go through all the settings that I use personally and I like to leave on. Now, one important thing is there's a graphic setting right here that if we go in display and down to graphic settings, there's a thing called GPU scheduling. And at this point in time, I'm going to do a test on it, but I'd recommend just leaving it off for now. You can turn it on, of course, in the future. And if you update your graphics card driver and it appears there, then it may be worth leaving on for you. So straight away with Nightlight, this is something I personally like to leave on. It saves us installing Flux and it actually does a really good job. My settings here, I leave it on 40, I schedule Nightlight and I set the hours from 7 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. Your mileage may vary, of course, depending on where you live in the world, you might wanna customize it to how you like your nightlight. Then moving through sound, there's nothing there to change. Notifications and actions. This is one thing I like to completely just turn off altogether because I don't like any suggestions or tips or tricks from Microsoft and it just turns off services that I usually don't need. Basically next up here is focus assist. I like to turn this off and I like to turn all these other boxes off here. Then we move on to power and sleep. And this is a pretty uh, important one depending on what device you are on. I always like to leave it on high performance mode and then I go to change advanced settings and I like to change this right here to turn off hard drive to zero, then go down quickly to sleep and allow hybrid sleep. I like to turn this off 
And the reason being is because some computers, especially when I'm flipping a PC, some of the PCs I'm flipping can have problems with hybrid sleep. Another thing you can do is turn this slideshow here to paused. That's just how I like to set my power settings and then we can close that down. Next up here is storage and we can move down to the optimized drive tab setting here because this one is actually a bug that's been going around. Some people get affected by this heavily and I like to manually optimize my drives regardless. It's one thing that I've been doing. So we can left click on the change settings here and then left click on run on a schedule and then click OK and now it'll be off. And so if we need to optimize our drive here, we can just click optimize, it's done. Now how I usually do this is after I delete a lot of my temporary files on my desktop, which I use for video editing on this computer behind me, I then optimize my drive after that. So that's an easy way to do that. Apparently there's a problem where it'll just keep optimizing your drive more, way more frequent than you need. And if, especially if you're in the middle of a game, that's not a good thing. Uh, moving through now, we can skip ta uh, tablet. We can then move on to multitasking. This is up to you. I personally like to leave all the snap windows off because I stream and I put multi uh, windows through different monitors. Snapping just really like affects how I can stream and stuff, especially on my main rig. Uh, though if you like snapping, definitely leave it on. Timeline, I like to turn this suggestions tab off here. Moving through projecting to this PC, there's nothing there. Shared experiences, there is a setting here that I like to turn off and that is let apps on other devices open and message apps on this device and vice versa. So it's basically just taking off this share control. Uh, anything that can really annoy you and bring up a service that you don't need, we wanna be turning that off. Now, clipboard history, I like to actually leave this on personally on my main rig. This is something that I leave on because I find it's an extremely handy tool when you're copy pasting. Uh, for instance, when I sell stuff on Gumtree and Facebook, I like to just copy stuff across from the Facebook ad to the Gumtree ad in two different titles or three different titles. And so that's actually very handy. I personally like to leave that on. Uh, remote desktop, I don't use that. I don't need it, so I leave it off. And then we can go back now and we're gonna move through. So that's the system tab all done we can now move through the devices tab. Now, Bluetooth, if you have a Bluetooth device connected to your PC, leave this on. I don't have any Bluetooth devices currently connected to my benchmark rig. This is the one I'm optimizing, so I'm going to turn it all off. That's just a service that we no longer need running. Printers and scanners, it's the same thing. If you don't need your printer on, you can just take that off. Let Windows manage my default printer if you don't have one but since I am using a printer on my main PC, I would leave this on. Mouse, we can have now a uh, cursor speed. So this is a new feature to Windows uh, 10 2004, and you can change your cursor speed in increments of one to 20, as opposed to the original one to um, 11, which that option still does exist in Windows itself. It's just, you've now got an additional layer where you can uh, change your cursor speed even more. So it's great if you've got a mouse that doesn't have big, uh, I mean, small DPI adjustments. So you may wish to play with that, but um, scroll inactive windows whenever I hover over them, I like to turn this off. That just enables me then to um, essentially have all my scroll windows showing up so they're not hiding. Uh, the next thing here, typing, this uh, pretty much gets it right from the get-go. You don't have to change anything there. Same with Pen and Windows Inc. Autoplay, this is a service that I like to turn off because it's actually been made to be an individual service on its own that remains active. So I turn that off nowadays because I just don't use it. Uh, USB as well, notify me when there are issues connecting to this USB device. I take this off. I don't need any services running in the background that are just waiting there and um, especially if you're on a potato computer, hogging resources. So that's devices done, phone, unless you've got a phone connected to your PC, there's nothing here to share. Network is an interesting one because if you're using a LAN cable like I do in my studio, then I can just turn off Wi-Fi completely. Uh, though of course, if you need Wi-Fi, make sure you leave that on. But one important setting that I think you should turn off is let me use online sign up to get connected. So we just take that off. It's a useless setting unless you use it, of course, but it's one that I just turn off personally. Going through here, dial up VPN, all this other stuff. I like to turn this off. Airplane mode, we don't need that. Uh, basically because we're on a desktop computer, right? We're changing all these settings to a desktop power user. They're going through personalization. There's not much to do here besides making your own custom windows look the way you want. See here, I like to change this to red. That's the recent color. In terms of background, I'd like to upload my own image, which is not currently on this PC. 
And then we can go down to start here and I like to turn all these off except for show recently added apps. So that way you know if something is, um, has been recently added in your uh, start menu, just so you're not fooled by anything. If something's secretly installed on your PC, you'd be able to know what it is. Then we move over to taskbar. And this is an important one because I like to take this off, replace command prompt with Windows PowerShell. So basically when you hit Windows X key, which I do use, you can quickly bring up command prompt admin. But if you have this on, it'll bring up PowerShell admin. So I like to turn that off and I like to take off show badges on the taskbar. And then we've got this one here. I like to um, never combine my buttons on my taskbar. So that just essentially shows me all the programs that are open in my taskbar, which is something I've always done ever since I've used Windows. So moving on now, we've got apps. And this is another important one because I believe this is the optional features. We now get full control over what we can uninstall from Windows here. So you guys can just go through and uninstall all this stuff that you don't need that was previously just on your computer. And so if you're not printing, which I'm not on this rig, I can take off my print management console. Uh, WordPad, I use Notepad personally. Windows Media Player, we can get rid of that. Windows Hello Face. If you're using this on a phone, Windows Phone, you may wish to um, leave that on, especially on a laptop if you're using Hello Sign In. But these are the things that I just get rid of because I don't need them. And so Fax and Scan, another important one if you're scanning documents in your computer, especially with Print Console. But if you're not doing any of that, you can get rid of that stuff. And you can add these features back later. So again, this is all reversible. You can change that and add it back in the future. Now, after you're done with that, you can go through and remove any of these ad, like apps that you just, if you don't use them, you can just get rid of them. Uh, actually, calculate is pretty important. I like, <laughs> I like calculate. We're, we're gonna leave that on, but Farm Heroes and Saga, Feedback Hub. I mean, this is just all crap and more crap. Groove Music, I'm pretty sure everyone uses Spotify anyway. Um, mail and calendar, I mean, I use Outlook personally. Maps, I wish I could get rid of that, but I can't. OneDrive is just, I use um, Google's uh, thingamajig, Google Drive. So yeah, that's what I use with that. So Solitaire, I don't play it. My parents do, so I'd leave it on their computers, but just going through, getting rid of all the crap here. All the crap, it's going, it's going. Um, Office, I do use that on my main PC. So you're just basically saying, do I need this program? If you don't need it, I use Original Paint 2 over Paint 3D, but do you need these programs? If you don't need them, you're just getting rid of them to clear up clutter and clear up crap on your desktop. And believe me, look how much, this, this is just more and more, every Windows update, there's just more and more of this stuff. So we're just going through here and I just don't need this stuff. Uh, if you're an Xbox user though, if you connect your Xbox to your PC, you might want to leave these Xbox services on and especially with the game bar when we get onto that later. The default apps, once you've installed your browser, so if you've got Google Chrome, you can change that to Google Chrome. Um, also, we can go, you know, Microsoft Edge. So we've got that. We'll just do that for now. Now going down to offline maps, we can left click here, delete all maps and automatically update apps. We can turn a uh, map, sorry, turn that off and then move on to apps for websites. I just like to turn these off. I don't want any services running in the background. Uh, video playback, they get that right. Windows security notification icon, I just turn that off at startup. It helps free up some stuff and we've uninstalled OneDrive before, so we just did ourselves a favor. Now we can move on to accounts. And this is your info, right? If you've signed in with a Microsoft account, you can change all your stuff here. Same with your email and accounts. But again, as we said before, we don't have to worry about any of this stuff um, because we haven't had a sign in account on Microsoft. Though, if you do sign in with an account and you're using different uh, Windows 10 devices, you can leave this option on because then if you've done all this whole Windows 10 tutorial, you can log into your Microsoft account and it'll apply those settings to that particular device. So that is the beauty of Windows 10. It is getting a lot better in that regard. But because I have only two computers, I got my benchmark rig and my uh, main rig, I just leave this off. I used to have my travel rig, but <laughs> with what's going on around the world at the moment, I, I ain't gonna be doing any traveling for some time to come. Who knows how long? 
Anyhow, moving through the rest of these tabs, there's nothing worth mentioning here. So we can go back to the main settings tab and we can go to time and language. Now, one thing is I like to do this uh, quick trick and that is set time automatically. So I can turn it on, it sets it automatically. Then after that, I like to turn it off. So basically it's not a process in the background that's automatically syncing to Microsoft every time my clock ticks a minute or a second over. So that's one thing you can do. I personally do it on all my rigs. I just leave the time, like once it's already set to what it is, I leave it off. Uh, region, you can make sure your region's all set properly there to wherever country you're living in. Um, there is no actual English Australia. There's only English UK and English United States for the actual core OS. So I just, after that, do English Australia. Anyhow, we're now moving on to the gaming tab here where if you've got an Xbox and you like the Xbox game bar, then you can leave this setting on. I like to turn it all off. I don't need this. I don't need the captures as I personally use Nvidia's um, capturing program, Shadowplay. And I just like to take all this off personally because I use a different program. Though if you're using this, you might wanna do it. Uh, as for game mode, I like to turn this off. It's something that I don't need. I have found in the past that it does help really old computers, but it just depends. Um, I think in this time around, because we've got GPU scheduling, we can turn that off and we turn everything off and in tandem, we'll just have a raw OS. So that's something we'll do for now. And then going over to ease of access, we can left click this because this has actually got some really cool settings that aren't really to do with performance so much, but more so to do with aesthetic. But we'll take off in the first display tab. I like to take off the show animations in Windows. If you're on a really old computer, you may wish to take off show transparency in Windows. But because I like my Windows looking a little bit bling worthy, I like to leave this on personally. I like to also take this one off, automatically hide the scroll bars in Windows, just so I know I've got my scroll bars there. I'm not too fussed on having those scroll bars showing up. It sort of reminds me a bit of the old school Windows, and I used to like that. Show desktop background image, of course. I prefer that, but if you wanna make a raw, snappy Windows as fast as possible, you might wanna take both of these off, but I find they're just, they're basically not a service that's pinging to a Microsoft server all the time. So these two aren't too bad. Though now moving down to mouse pointer, you can see that this mouse icon, this whole video has been big. And the reason it's been so big is because you can now change your mouse pointer size and you can also customize it. So we're seeing here, I'm customizing this uh, big time here, making it a big mouse. I'm not gonna make it too big, but you can also uh, change the color of it too. So we've got just the custom color there. You can make it transparent if you want to. Uh, I like to take this off, show visual feedback. I don't need that, it's okay. I don't need your visual feedback, Microsoft. I'm all good here. So leave that as it is. Then we can move down to text cursor. Of course, if you're on a normal, like after this video, I'm gonna change it back down to like the smallest size. I think it looks really cool. I can definitely see my cursor more easily than I could before. Though now moving on to text cursor, this is a really cool one that you may notice that I've left it on as well. We can see here that I like to make it nice and big around four and change it to pink. And that way, whenever there's a text box that's active, these two little things will come up and I can see that's where, I, that's where I'm on at the moment. So really handy feature. I actually really like the addition of text cursor in uh, Microsoft Update 2004. Then we've got Magnify. I personally don't use this. So if you're into using this, then you can customize these settings yourself. But I have to turn everything off with that. Same with color filters. This one's really good if you're colorblind, of course. Um, something you may have to look into with high contrast, but I leave all these off. I am slightly colorblind, but it's to a real light shade of pink, which I um, really don't have a whole lot of problems unless I'm playing some types of video games. But moving over here now to Narrator, it's off by default. And so we can just leave that off. If you want to use Narrator as well, you can um, have that on, but this has had a massive update where there's so many options now for you to change in Narrator itself. So if you use Narrator, it's received a big update. But you can see here, I'm just going through taking off all this stuff because I don't use Narrator personally. Uh, it's more for something I use when I'm in my car uh, with my smartphone. So with you know voice activated commands. Uh, going through audio, there's nothing really here to change. And same with the rest of these um, options here. There's just nothing here to really worry about. The moving over to search now, I like to personally go into search here 
and I like to take off these settings, work or school account, Microsoft account. The moderate settings is actually pretty cool. I find the safe search moderate settings pretty cool. Uh, search history on this device, I like to turn that off. I like to also clear the device history when I'm doing that. And then we're moving on to searching windows. The classic setting here has had an improvement to it as well with the indexed items. So leave that on classic, though if you like your more enhanced setting, you can turn that on if you've got a really powerful computer and you're constantly searching for things on Windows. Though turning that, leaving that on classic is the best uh, option for me personally. Though now we can move over to privacy and here's where I just like to turn pretty much everything off here. I don't like um, Windows having anything to do. So we're going through these tabs and we're just pretty much turning off all this stuff and we can delete the diagnostic data as well as going to feedback frequency here and going and selecting left click never. That's an important one because we don't want Windows asking for feedback. We don't want a service running in the background as well, trying to pop up out of nowhere. Now we go down to active activity history. We can left click store my activity history on this device. I like to take that off and also like to clear it at the same time. And then moving down through location, there's nothing really here to change because we turned uh, a lot of these settings off when we first installed Windows with those checkboxes. Uh, but now moving down to camera and microphone, if you use a camera and microphone, be very uh, careful here to make sure that the apps that you're using with your camera aren't selected to off. But so it's one of those things where on my main desktop, I'm gonna leave this on. Same with my microphone, right? With Adobe Premiere Pro, even though it's not installed on this thing. If you don't use a web camera, then you can just turn that off completely, right? If you don't use a microphone too, you can turn that off. But if you're using Discord with a microphone, definitely leave this on. But I still like to take it off from Katana because we're not using Katana. And I like to take it off from Microsoft Edge because I'm not using that. It's only really my games and our Discord that's using my microphone and as well as Skype on my main PC. But we just uninstalled that on this PC. But moving now through voice activation, I like to turn that off as we said before. We don't really use these settings. I only use them on my smartphone. Notification, we can left click and allow apps to access your notifications. Turn that off. Going through um, account settings here, we, I like to just turn all this stuff off. I don't want anyone accessing my personal information and I don't want any sort of services running in the background that could access um, what I'm about. So we're going through here and we're pretty much turning all these off and just uh, useless services that I don't use personally and I don't need. Then we will stop here at background apps because this one's pretty important uh, where we've got here, if we turn all this off, then we might come into some little problems, especially if we've got other apps installed. I personally like to take off all the apps that I'm not going to use. And so even if they're running, they're not running in the background. So I leave the NVIDIA control panel on because I use an NVIDIA graphics card. It's pretty important to leave that one on. Uh, app diagnostics, I like to turn this off. Automatic file downloads, there's nothing there. Documents, I like to turn this setting right off here and then moving through the picture library off and then that turns all these other extra features off. Same with video, allow access there, bang off. And the last one, file system, allow apps to access your file system off. And then we can get back to the main tab here and we've got one more to go through in the Windows settings. That's update and security. We can left click this right here because there is some important changes here. And the best one for me personally is the delivery optimization. We can personally change this to anything we want. I'm just gonna limit Microsoft to 10 megabits per second when they are um, updating my PC. So I think that's a good setting. It's new to 2004. Uh, Windows security is another important tab this one here has a new deep scan within it. But if we left click on that icon like we just did there, so I'll left click that again, threat and virus protection, we've got the scan options. There's a new scan. If you think something's wrong with your PC, you can do a full scan that way. But what I like to do here is virus and threat protections. I like to left click on this right here and I leave real protection on, but I like to turn all the rest of these off. So automatic sample submission and tamper protection. I find I don't need these personally. And then in terms of other settings through here, I find I leave them all on default. There is another settings tab here in exploit protection, which if we left click on that, that's got some really advanced settings, which I personally haven't tested yet. So I won't know how they perform with games. So we're just gonna leave that one for now. And I will come back with the video, same with that and GPU scheduling and see how much of a difference they make on the rig itself. Though that's the most important tab in this um, Windows update is the security. 
So coming off Windows Security, that's about all we have to change here because there's nothing left to change in that tab. Now we're finished with the Windows settings. We can go back to our main desktop and we're gonna apply some uh, quick tweaks here to the services tab. So we just type in here, services, left click, services.app. And I like to change this to running because every time I install Windows and every time you update Windows, there's always these two settings. They always appear, connected, user experiences and telemetry properties. I like to open this up here and then left click disable, apply and then stop and then go okay. And same with this one here, distributed link tracking client, right click that, left click properties, go left click disabled, left click stop and then apply. And then those two services, I find they are really annoying. They're the most two, especially if you're on an old hard drive, this can uh, speed things up just that little bit and they just keep coming back every time you update Windows or install Windows. After that, we can then go to MS Config and then left click System Configuration, go to left click Boot tab, no GUI boot and a click, click Apply. Then after that, we can then go type here, left click and type in System and we should see this one right here, System. Left click that and then we can go to our Advanced System Settings and of course, this is what we do every time we install Windows here around Tech Yes City. We um, just pretty much make it so it's snappy, but it still looks good. So you can see there, you just copy those settings and that'll just make things very fast. We already see that taking effect and it's just making Windows more snappy. And then this one here, we can go start up and recovery and left click time to display operating systems. That'll just make it boot up that little bit faster. System protection, it's usually off by default. And then remote tab here. I don't know why this is always left on by default, but I like to take this off just in case a hacker wants to gain advantage to your system. And then we left click OK. And at that stage, we are pretty much good to go. And with all that out of the way, that's about it for optimizing the core of Windows 10 on 2004. These are the services and everything that I turn off personally that I feel makes a difference. And of course, if I've got something or I come into a problem in the future, I can always reverse the steps and turn them back on. The last couple of things I like to do when I install Windows on a fresh install is install VLC Media Player for playing videos and music that's manual files and also Google Chrome for browsing the net. And with all that aside, if you guys enjoyed today's optimization tutorial, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And if you have any tips or tricks of your own, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Or if you need any help, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Because around Tech yes City, we're all about helping out one another. And if you guys enjoyed this content and you've stayed this far and you're not yet subbed and you wanna see the videos the moment they drop, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the videos the moment they drop. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.